Here we are looking at whale sharks, the largest living fish. They are sharks, not whales, but feed on plankton, like baleen whales. Manta rays are at home in the same ecological niche. They are also large pelagic filter feeders. It turns out that this ecological niche of being large, swimming about and filter feeding plankton had been filled by different animals almost since the beginning of animal evolution. The earliest large pelagic filter feeders were arthropods. These were highly unusual anomalous shrimp, radiodons, animals with their teeth arranged in a circle around their mouth. A particularly large radiodont, Egyrocassis benomule, grew to two meters, which made it the largest animal of the Ordovici. It was one of the first animals to take the large pelagic filter feeder niche, now occupied by whales. Lizichtis was a bony fish, like a goldfish or a tuna, but it grew to massive sizes. Lizichtis and its relatives filter fed throughout most of the Mesozoic, from the Jurassic to the Cretaceous, 166 to 65 million years ago, the time when dinosaurs dominated the land. We are here in the Whaleborn Museum of Silliman University in Tumaguete in the Philippines. And behind me are the skulls of Omura's whales, which are small exant spalene whales. Now, when we look at the conclusions of our study, we see four major conclusions. One is we see a size increase in most of these lineages of large pelagic filter feeders. This was particularly extreme in, in these baleen whales. Now, we also see a transition of taxonomic groups, especially post-Cambrian. So after these initial uh, large pelagic filter feeding arthropods, we see that vertebrates are taking over, and particularly sharks and rays. So their light skeletons probably make them particularly predestined for attaining large sizes. Now, we also see that most, even though not all, lineages of large pelagic filter feeders evolved from large marine predators. This has an interesting consequence, which is that after these large mass extinctions on planet Earth, there are often gaps of tens of millions of years where it seems that the oceans were devoid of large pelagic filter feeders. I assume that this is the case because at first the large oceanic predators had to evolve after these mass extinctions wiped out most large animals. Only after large predatory animals had re-evolved could they give rise to lineages of large pelagic feeder feeders. And this also leaves us with another thought. Now, fortunately in all but a few nations, whaling has stopped. Nevertheless, a lot of whale populations are still in dire straits. And while any extinction of a species is of course a tragedy, ex making a, a large species of large pelagic filter feeder extinct would be particularly bad because we have seen these large gaps after these mass extinctions. And if we as humanity actually go ahead and complete the six mass extinctions which we seem to be engineering at this point in time. It, it will probably take much longer to, for nature to re-involve these uh, species of large pelagic feeders.